let's see Arcadius Pro. So with Arcadius, uh, we have a number of ways of uh, tracking our projects and starting new projects from the home page here, where we see that I have my projects in the top left, a full database, which we'll go to later on. Uh, I can set up my profile to automate the, the report styles um, and then find all of our latest product information, the support, the updates, and download the plugins. We can see all of my projects down at the bottom. And the projects, of course, are of unlimited sizes. And we can see the power in this column here. So I think the, the largest project I have on my computer is 26 megawatt peak. Um, but of course, with no limit, that could be um, unlimited multiples more than that. To start the project, we have options um, to do so as a basic project without 3D conception, a pro 3D project, which will of course have the 3D conception. Also from a project such as uh, SketchUp, if I already have a model of my project, I can use the plugin um, to position my modules on that building and create my project there. The same goes for Revit. And we also have a partnership with K2 Base um, using their web tool to uh, start a project with the roof mount system and then import it directly into Archelios Pro. And then also Sony Design with the same idea. Of course, at the end of a project, we can download the Archelios Pro file, meaning we can store it locally and then start again from that file on another um, computer, for example. Okay, let's start a 3D project. That way you will see all of the benefits of Arcadius Pro from start to end. The example I will give you today is a Royal Mail distribution center in Plymouth, England. Not necessarily known for its irradiation, but a splendid example. So once we've localized the project, we can see here we're in Plymouth, England in the south next to the sea. We can validate the location and save it. From this 2D map, I can, of course, take screenshots that will go into my report. Maybe I want one that shows the proximity to the sea. And then check the weather station. So the standard weather station based on meteor norm data um, from 1996 to 2015 in this case um, is from Plymouth and it's at five kilometers from where we are. So we might want to review what that weather station is giving us. And I've already imported a PVG station, uh, which is satellite based data uh, on the site. And we can see the change in the global irradiation. When I change between the two, we move from 1,071 kilowatt hours per meter squared to 1,153. So that's a good indicator of what we might be able to use. If we're not a fan of that particular weather station, then we have various options for them. Um, I can change my climate type and import from various sources. So here we have 3E uh, TMY data, which we can import automatically from a web service if we have the, uh, the user key, of course. We can import Archelios CSV files, HelioClim, NREL, uh, PVGIS data, as well as the web service, which is what I've used for this station here. Um, SolarGIS TMY data, um, SolarGIS data as a CSV, and PVSYST TMY data as well. At which point we just import the weather station. It's very simple, but we have a number of input sources. And if you have your own weather station, um, you can import that data via a CSV as well. Once we're happy with the weather station, we can advance um, in our project. We're happy with all of this data. We can import and export shading analysis, sun eye shading, um, and export to CSV. And we can immediately see the horizon profile, the optimal irradiation for this site, um, if we um, orient our modules optimally and 
that is indicated here with the optimal orientation and optimal tilt. If we move on to the next step, we can see this is where we are going to model our installation. I'm going to change to a Google satellite image because it's a bit better quality for where we are. And this is where the work begins. Now, it's really simple to start a project in 3D. So for this building, the distribution center, we can see the famous red vans underneath. We're going to add a flat roof. Very simply, zoom in, trace the outside of the roof. And because it's a square, this is going to go quickly. I can set the height of the building, the parapet at the edge, select the, the southern edge, which is the default orientation for the modules, and an exclusion width, which I'll come back to later. We will, of course, have to think about our shading. So if I add some shading down the south side of the building, um, we will see later on that this is a bit higher up. So just anything that impacts the south side of the building. Really quickly trace that. And we'll have a, a height of 10 meters. Hopefully we'll see the impact of that mask. The same thing for this building here. Um, I think they have similar heights, so there shouldn't be too much impact, but it will look good in the report, and we will just make sure that there's no impact from there. Zoom a bit. Of course, you can see the lines appear that help me um, trace that building. Of course, in your projects, you would of course uh, measure these buildings um, using various tools or data that we will see later um, to make sure that this data is as precise as possible. So we can already see the 3D model, which appears in the right. That gives us a good idea of what's going on. And from this point, if I select my building, I can add exclusions. So where I know that I've got obstructions on the roof, I can target that area, um, decide on its height, the exclusion width that I need to respect. Add another zone so we can see here that we have the ceiling windows that we need to avoid um, that have maybe 0.2 meters height. Same again. I think there's five of these. So of course we can draw them really quickly. And you can see them appearing in the window on the right hand side as well. So we're sure of what we're doing. We get a good visual confirming that there's nothing wrong with our drawing. And there we go. So if I come back to the building, I'm going to enter an exclusion width of three meters. And that will suit me today. And then very simply add a PV array. Uh, now, once I get to the module choice, this is where we have one of the massive advantages with Archelios, uh, is that we have a centralized catalog service. Um, what does that mean? It's that we have a team of people um, who work exclusively on maintaining a centralized catalog that's used for all of our products, um, all of our software solutions, and they are in um, constant talks with all of the manufacturers to make sure that we have the most up-to-date data, uh, the most complete data, and in certain cases, uh, we, we even help them to uh, organize their data. So uh, it's a, a very impressive service. It takes a lot of work to do, um, but as an Archelios user, you get the benefit of all of that. Now, in our catalog, we have, <laughs> I checked the data with our team just yesterday, we currently have nearly 18,000 PV modules, uh, 6,500 inverters, uh, 77 optimizers and well over a thousand batteries. So normally you have everything you need to um, uh, do your, your solar study. Um, if you don't 
have a reference. One of the key advantages here is that through our support website, you can request the addition of different references. So you send us what you need, and normally within a week, um, we can add that to the centralized catalog, which means that the reference is then available for all of your colleagues and all of your partners as well that are using Arcelius. Um, if, however, you are pressed for time, one week sounds like a long time, you have a project to um, deliver tomorrow, then you can, of course, go into the database section of Arcelius um, and add it manually. That, of course, is only available locally for your particular profile, but if you do that and you request it, then it, for the, the following project, um, you will have all of that data available. When we add a module, we have different criteria to filter the results depending on what we want. Um, maybe I have some old stock and I want to include obsolete references. Um, I know I'm going to use Archelios Calc afterwards, so I'm going to filter references that are already um, available in there and in my sales regions as well, um, depending on where we are. Um, I may want to filter based on the availability of different references. So for this project, uh, I think I had a Voltec um, Tarka, Tarka 126. And I was going to use uh, a VSMD 400. Here we go. So we can already see that Arcadios tries to fill up um, 999 modules uh, before I've done anything. Uh, if it's a small building, we can already start to see the effect of that. Here we have a bigger building. Um, so 999 doesn't quite fill the rooftop, but that's okay because we're going to come around to that. Um, we're going to study um, a portrait orientation and enter the layout parameters. So there we can see the 999 modules. If I add some more nines to that, we won't be limited at all. In the tables, I know my setup um, by heart, so I'm going to have um, a, a roof mount that accepts 20 modules side by side, uh, which is not a limiting factor, it just means that I will have sets of 20. For the geometry, um, we can calculate the um, inter-row distances based on the um, shading that that will incur on the row behind any given row. Um, so once we start adding in the, the values for B, uh, spacing of 2, C, we saw 42 degrees earlier on, or we'll put 41 in, why not? And then D, uh, 0, D of course uh, being the height here. I have a fixed orientation of 12.5. And from this point, if I calculate a static, it will show me that we need nearly four meters of distancing between the rows to have uh, zero um, shading impact. And that's not bad. I would like to add a few more rows in there if I can. So um, I will maybe reduce that and accept that there will be a, a small um, impact from shading. And there we can see that in between the roof windows, we have four, four. Uh, three and one. That's not bad. I might reduce it a bit more so that I can have sets of four. There we go. That's that's much better. I'm happy with that. Here is where we can set up dual orientation, so east-west modules as well. Uh, we can have any type of installation we like. And I will close here, go back to the zone. And what I realize is I don't like these particular tables at the bottom. So what I can do is either remove the tables individually, or in the case of a larger building, um, I can just add an exclusion to that same zone. I can add exclusions with zero height, so they won't have any influence on the model. But we'll just take those last rows away. Obviously for different installations, uh, maybe a ground mounted system, that can save us a lot of time rather than deleting the tables individually. There we go, zero and zero. And we can see that now we have the four rows between each set of windows. There we go, but now you're going to ask me, but that's a rooftop installation. It's not very complicated. Um, 
exactly it's very simple to do and what we have as well are the other types of insulation um, for this particular area i have already mocked up some of them um, so i'll show you very quickly what that looks like uh, know that we also have the sketchup plugin um, and we have the 3d map there now the 3d map uses uh, lidar and photogrammetry data across the world um, so depending on where you are and the availability of the data which is from external providers um, you'll be able to import a full 3d environment um, today we're working on the integrated 3d in our tool um, but we will see that in just a second uh, with the import of 3d data now here for instance uh, we have car parking canopies and what we can do is calculate the irradiation here it's exactly the same site of course with different types of insulation so there's no problem calculating your car park canopies we can see that with the east-west orientations above our rows of parking and then i also had a separate project that i will show you very quickly um, with utility scale trackers of course this is a bigger project so it may take a moment to load whilst i'm waiting let's have a look at sketchup so in sketchup we've taken the same site we've localized it and then just use the big orange button in the top to import uh, which will open on a different window um, to import the project in 3d so that's where it will import automatically all of these buildings we can see it imports the terrain um, all of the trees so that is a an mns surface um, provided by google solar and included of course with a platinum license on archelios and that means we will have a complete shading analysis which is very precise we will take less time conceiving the project and that will give us a really fantastic image at the end for our clients. Here we go back to the utility scale installation. So this is 26 megawatts of trackers. Uh, it's a very big project. Um, it's slightly north of where we were. So the Royal Mail Center is here. Um, I think this is a uh, maybe like a waste treatment center, um, an old tip. By the looks of it and we can see that each of these trackers here if i zoom in a bit more we have tables of 20 trackers uh, what we can do here is identify them by inverter identify them by mppts strings etc and this project has already been calculated so when we go into the losses and gain analysis, we can see that the bifacial gain is in there because we've used bifacial modules. Uh, we can see the shading profile, um, none. <laughs> it's a good flat area here. Um, and the trackers are in there as well. So we have north-south axis uh, on the trackers, meaning we're going to follow the sun from east to west each day. We'll close that down and go back to our initial project. So once we reach the next page, the, the model has been confirmed. We have all of our modules here. Um, if we like, we can split them into different groups. Uh, today, we're going to use just one group, but to show you how that works, um, it's very simple. Just a case of uh, selectioning, selecting my mouse, selecting a set of modules, and then we can have different groups. I can change the color of the groups to identify them a little bit better for my client for instance and then assign uh, inverters per group today we don't need to do that we will just use one group of 960 modules so we'll move on to the inverters we will add that um, and my preference today will be the the Huawei inverters um, this of course is the the same catalog um, that we had before uh, previously, we selected the modules using our centralized catalog service. Uh, now, of course, we're on to the inverters. Um, here you can see there are different parameters for the trackers using backtracking. We still have the same selection criteria um, and we can now filter the results for the inverters as well. Um, I had tables of 20, but here I know that I've got three sets of 20 per row. 
So I'm going to use 30 um, modules in a string. We have an automatic configurator, which saves a lot of time for our users, meaning that once I've set my filters, um, it will provide um, the optimum suggestions um, for my arrangement. Obviously, I've got different options here with different modules, uh, different inverters, uh, which are all applicable for my installation. And I can filter through them and see what suits my needs. The first one for me was absolutely perfect. I wanted the 196 KTL, um, so multiple strings of 30. Uh, that gives me a um, inverter over, um, I'm thinking in French. <laughs> it gives me a ratio of 102% um, charge on my inverter. So that suits me perfectly. Once I'm happy with that, I validate the configuration and move on to the wiring. Uh, wiring, of course, is something that can take a lot of time. Uh, that doesn't need to be the case in Arkelios. We can see our two inverters. We can cable the strings manually um, per string if we so wish. Or to save a lot of time, we have automatic wiring for the whole installation. We have different types of wiring. Um, so in an S pattern, if we have uh, tables of 10 by 2, for instance, that can save us a lot of time. We can have custom wiring um, for each table. The tracker project, for instance, that I just showed you uh, would wire like that. But here we're going to use a simple S pattern um, because, of course, we have one single row per section. And once I cable that, click on the first module, decide on a direction, and double click to confirm, and that's it. No need to spend any extra time wiring for your uh, preliminary studies where we don't need to uh, waste time on these details. We do, of course, have the irradiation analysis as well. So with my different visuals, um, these are something that uh, we will be able to put into the report. So if I hide that section for a moment, we can see that there's no real uh, shading impact on these modules. If I click right uh, on them, I can, of course, see the irradiation without shading and with shading. Um, so a very minor loss due to that uh, um, closing of uh, the distances earlier on. What I can do is use this button here to add a photo of that to the report, and then also maybe use the, uh, the inverter or MPPT visuals as well. Let's take that for the report. So from then on, I can look at the, uh, the shading uh, for March, for instance, at seven o'clock in the morning, if I just calculate the production and save, we'll be able to see the impact um, on each MPPT. Once I've calculated that, I can then select the types of object that I want. Here I want an MPPT, and uh, let's go the closest to the shading possible. And there, typically, there's not an awful lot of shading, but we can still see that the, cur the curve has been uh, slightly cut off at the top here. So we can see the, the impact of that shading on the IV and PV curves, uh, the production by time as well, irradiation by time. And that we can see at various different times uh, of any month of the year and for any MPPT um, in the project. The final thing we have on this screen is of course the equipment list, uh, which can save you again a lot of time in preparing your, your site works um, and uh, what material you might need to buy. So here, uh, Archelios has automatically taken the number of modules we have in the project, um, the number of inverters and the type of inverters we have in the project. Uh, I might also want to include um, a roof mount structure. So roof mount uh, type structure, why not? And the quantity. Um, 12, maybe 12, 16 even. Let's take 16 of them. Um, and then maybe one more. Literally, we can add anything we want here. So um, we're going to call it, uh, yeah, rent. Why not? So rent. And we're going to associate that as an OPEX type. Um, so we can see different ways of um, organizing our material list. Uh, why am I putting rent in a, a list of equipment? Uh, we will see that later on in the economic analysis because all of those lines will be forwarded to the economic analysis. Um, so whilst it's not physical material, that will be able to help us later on. Let's just recalculate the project to make sure everything's up to date. So we can see here 
immediately the peak power, the module surface for our site, the first year results and the average values um, in both DC and AC. We have the specific yield in P50 and P90 statistical analyses and the performance ratio. So these are really are the, the key indicators for our project. We can see the AC production in kilowatt hours per month, kilowatt hours per year, uh, the full losses and gains analysis. We didn't choose bifacial modules in this project. So of course they're, they're not here, they're not applicable, but in a project with bifacial modules, that would be the case. Uh, we can see the near shading. Um, unlike the trackers project here, we do have an influence on near shading, particularly in the winter months. Partial shading as well, the same goes. Um, and then the full losses breakdown. There is of course a gain for tolerance. Um, there we go. And the clipping, of course, uh, there's not a lot of clipping in this project, 0.33%, uh, but we can see the clipping in each year, if we so wish. Uh, we can filter that to any particular month. So there in April, I could see a bit. And we can see in certain areas, there is going to be a bit of clipping. We do, of course, have a tool to optimize the clipping as well. And then let's move on to the self-consumption. So if we add some devices, uh, in this case, we have uh, lots of different options. So firstly, import a CSV file um, for both a partial profile and an annual profile. If it's partial, that means that Archelios will calculate uh, the, the, the use case for that period and um, spread it over the year um, based on typical usage. So that's a, a really handy tool if we don't have, uh, if it's a new property, for example, we don't have a full year of data. We can use that. We can import different average profiles. Um, these currently are German and French. We're working on adding more generic profiles to this. So we can import them and they are standardized profiles. Uh, the German ones are BDEW. The French ones are from Enedis. Um, we have different electrical devices, of course, um, which we can add to. We can create new ones. We have electric vehicles and we have, in France at least, um, a uh, tool that can uh, communicate with those uh, the uh, different counters that enable communication uh, with the authorization of the property owner. We can recover those uh, those details from the counter and import the real um, consumption for that profile. In our case, we're going to use a CSV so that we can see that. I had one pre-prepared here. It's a 15 minute profile. It's a full annual profile. And when we import that, all we do is select the columns, very, very simple for each element of data. Uh, it's a CSV, so we obviously identify the separators, um, the first line of data, and then it tells us a little reminder of what I've selected, the date, the time, and the power at any given time. Let's import that. Very simple, we see the full annual profile. We can edit it hourly, we can edit it monthly. Um, and what I want to do is just import um, a hypothetical scenario, we're going to charge uh, a series of uh, fleet vehicles for Royal Mail. They're going to be a Nissan NV200 um, electric van. So I've already checked it out. It was 37 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and a charger of 6.6 .6 kilowatts max. Uh, vehicle consumption uh, gives um, uh, potentially somewhat optimistic 190 kilometers of range and we can import that so we can now see the two profiles number one and number two the electric vehicles i said we would have a fleet so let's add 30 of them and if i look at the usage of the electric vehicles the hourly profile uh, doesn't suit the use case for royal mail so for the days monday through friday uh, what i can do is just reduce them there and assuming we will charge at the end of the rounds for a mail, seeing as it's a, a letter distribution service, um, we will have, say, 90% of the max power um, at 6 p.m. and at 7 p.m. Uh, that suits me. What I can do is just double check that for Saturday and Sunday as well, um, because there the vehicles won't move, so we're not going to charge them validate. The monthly profile, of course, we can see throughout the year. Um, that is fine for me. If I calculate and save that, we will see the consumption profile um, superposed on 
our production profile um, after um, the clipping, of course. And here we can see for any particular period. Um, oh, we're still saving. This is perhaps my internet. <laughs> there we go. So for any period of the year, we can see that profile again uh, throughout the month of March. Uh, we can see the consumption in red, uh, production in yellow, and uh, self-consumption in green down at the bottom here. Uh, we can see the percentages of each. Um, we have a very poor percentage of self-consumption, I suspect, because the production at the moment does not coincide with the consumption of the electric vehicles, which make up for a significant part of our profile. That being the case, let's use some storage. Um, let's add a BYD battery box, for instance, uh, the H10.2, that works just fine. And let's size the batteries for the amount of time we want to be autonomous. Um, so if I add five hours here, uh, Arcadios is going to automatically propose um, a number of batteries in series and in parallel that will uh, give me that required period. Um, if I calculate and save again, sending data, here we go. And let's zoom into a period. We can see the impact of those batteries in this graphic here. So let's uh, try and add a week here, uh, May the 2nd to the 10th, close enough. So we can see uh, we're over two weeks here. We've got five working days with the consumption profile here on self-consumption. Uh, the production for each day, including the weekend, where there is no consumption from those vehicles. And if we use battery state of charge, we can actually follow the state of charge of that battery um, with the production each day. It's going to be fully charged. And then when we consume that green peak, it drops right down to the bottom where there's still a little bit of autonomy through the night. Of course, through the weekend, it remains charged. And uh, we can see its battery usage down here. That, of course, has picked up our self-consumption quite significantly, um, both annually and for the period, meaning we are far more efficient with the electricity that we are producing. Um, of course, if we can use most of it, that's uh, uh, often preferred to make the most of different tariffs. So that's a good way of uh, optimizing our insulation. Moving on, we have the economic al analysis. Uh, seeing as we are on a, an English profile, it has defaulted to dollars. Uh, that, of course, doesn't work in England, so let's set it to GVP. Um, on my European keyboard, I don't have the pound symbol, so GVP will work just fine. Um, and let's go in and fill out these prices. One of the things we did earlier on was uh, set various items in the list of materials, which I can find again here um, and add prices for each item. So. If I want to, I can fill in this table rather specifically with the VAT on each item, the unit cost. That's why we had added, of course, the rent as an OPEX uh, item, um, and that we can simulate in our economic analysis. If I want to, I valid that, validate that, or I can cancel it um, and add in very simply, uh, if I bin that first, a, for my uh, preliminary study, uh, I want to do this quickly, so I can add, a price per watt peak um, because uh, obviously I know my providers, I know my products. So let's have maybe 1.6 pounds per watt peak, which gives me a price there. I can do the same for the inverter renewal. Uh, maybe uh, 0.3, let's call it an expensive one. I can uh, associate a maintenance cost as a percentage per year, a bank loan. We're at £614,400 of investment, so let's have half of that, 300000 at an interest rate. It's a government entity, so we've got preferential tariffs. Um, no subsidies, however. Uh, we'll be on self-consumption plus grid, so a, a feed-in tariff. Uh, we have, of course, all of the different options here, whether it's grid-connected, meaning 100% um, sales uh, to the grid, self-consumption, meaning self-consumption only, um, 
self-consumption plus grid, of course, in our case, and autonomous as well for those uh, isolated sites where there is no grid. That, of course, requires different equipment. Um, so self-consumption plus grid uh, for our sales uh, of the electricity produced. We might be at, uh, I don't know what the current tariffs are in England, but we'll put it at 10 pence with zero evolution. Um, and I believe the purchase prices are fairly expensive at the moment. Uh, if we put 26 pence uh, per kilowatt hour, um, that's maybe even optimistic with an evolution of 2%. For our discounting, um, obviously it's a full bankable analysis. So we have to have discounting in there. Um, different clients will be interested at, at different uh, degrees. Um, and today we will use a standard inflation rate of 2% and an equity rate of three. Um, Someone might correct me if the, the inflation is uh, <laughs> many times too small at the moment, but there we go. Let's calculate this economic simulation and see what we get. Um, it's already looking positive. I can see that after some 12 and a half years, the cash flow is positive. At 20 years, the cash flow uh, non-discounted is £436,751, so that's very good. Um, these two graphics are non-discounted, and uh, when we look at the discounted values, it's still looking pretty good. Uh, an internal rate of return of 5.8% and a payback period of uh, 15 years discounted. Of course, the discounted is going to take into account the inflation rate and the equity rate. We do have different ways of simulating prices. So that is a very simple way because we're in a preliminary study, um, but we can also create detailed uh, sales and purchase profiles, depending on days of the year, um, different types of profiles, so standard profiles, off-peak, on-peak hours, um, etc. You can also import CSVs and JSON files um, to do that more simply. We see the breakdown year by year. And if we go to uh, the final step, let's use the button at the bottom, we can see the export page. Um, so we already have the images I took earlier on populated in the export page. We have my company profile, company address. Um, of course, we're based in Normandy, France. Um, and uh, a couple of key details for the installation and the economic analysis. So this is all really good. We can change the logo. Uh, all of these informations are in the profile page, so we can uh, preset them. And of course, they will apply to all of our projects. We don't need to do them each time. Um, we can add new illustrations, either from returning to the pages that we've already seen or importing a picture that we uh, have already taken on site, for instance. All of the output files are here at the end of the project um, with also the possibility to share this project with my colleagues. Uh, let's imagine, for instance, that uh, I'm maybe a salesperson. Um, I've done a, a preliminary study very quickly, uh, managed to sell the project, and now I will pass it on to the engineer who's going to check my work and uh, make sure it's all feasible. Uh, this is where we would do that. We also have a project comparison. Um, so if I want to add a project to the comparison, uh, normally, I should have the car park canopies at the same site. If I select that, it will just take a short moment and add that to the comparison at the bottom. Here we go. So the net present value um, of my current site, uh, the car park canopies, which looks to be a lot more profitable with the um, different variables that I gave that project. Um, we see the performance ratio, uh, production, investment, um, and the net present value. So we can add unlimited projects to that comparison as well. Among our exports, we do, of course, have the report. Um, let's generate that, which we can customize with different sections using that cog, of course. Uh, we can add or remove each page or each part of this uh, report, um, and that will be produced in the next tab. Um, so obviously, we get to revisit all of those sections that we have already created. Um, it's all of the same information as before. Um, it looks like I need to change my settings for albedo. <laughs> the module inverter configurations, um, all of those details we have. So all of the project illustrations, um, the graphics that we looked at earlier, uh, bearing in mind that if I leave the graphics on certain settings here, for instance, the consumption profile is still on April the 29th to May the 10th that I looked at earlier. If we don't want that, we need to set them back to where they were. The year by year breakdown, economic analysis with the cash flow, and then year by year, um, 
it terminates with the glossary, of course. Uh, we also get the CSV export. If you have custom reports to do and you just want to take the values, you can do it that way. A single line diagram, um, which I should already have somewhere. It will be quicker. So that saves directly to a local file, which will look something like this. Um, of course, we can see the modules per inverter, um, the AC box, the protection, and coming soon, um, the consumption part and the storage as well in the same diagram. We have different schematics that can be exported. So if I show you the DXF export, we have a geometry plan for each module and the strings, and then also a 3D export for the entire building um, if we're doing um, projects that require uh, AutoCAD based deliverables. This is excellent because that can save us a lot of time uh, for the uh, the implantation plans or the different schematics uh, for cabling for our um, different uh, people on site that can be very helpful. And of course, uh, the Arcadios Calc file, which is uh, on the left here. So export to Arcadios Calc, a little bit like the uh, schematic that we have already opened. Um, if I show you Arcadios Calc, I already have the file open. Uh, it's another schematics program, but this time it's normative. So in here, we will decide which type of uh, standard we want to use. So we have the uh, C15712 uh, and the version one and also the European norm uh, 60364. Um, optimizers, of course, weren't taken into the uh, 712 uh, norm. So if we use them, we just need to select that option. Um, from this point, the process is very, very simple. Uh, we have a traffic light system for things that are correct, things that are not correct um, or conform, and uh, black for uh, things that can be changed. Um, if we go to the home button at the top, we see the type of connection point. Um, so here we have a low voltage subscription and other buildings, okay. And the idea of course, is just to go through the entire system and change, um, for example, the cable section, add the protections, check that the, uh, the notifications are okay. Um, again, they will be red, amber, or green, depending on their status. Um, and that will obviously tell us what we need to change throughout the project. Very, very simple. Then we get the inverters in the middle. Um, this is where we'll use the catalog again to check that everything is okay, that the protection is there. Um, so if I add, um, there we go, group surge arrestor, we can activate that and we can see it add itself in real time to our schematics. And this, of course, we can copy and paste across all of those strings. Uh, if we add a manufacturer um, here, I can see the various calculated values that are uh, acceptable for my project. Um, once I find the reference that I want, click OK. And there we go, the, the black remark is now removed um, because I've added that protection. There we go. I invite you to go and watch our videos and our upcoming webinars on Arcadios Calc. So going back to our presentation, um, one of the final major advantages of Arcadius Pro is that uh, we have an enormous team uh, who is constantly available uh, for your support. We have various different uh, uh, advantages to our product team. So uh, we have Elicad project with online collaboration. Uh, we have the integration of manufacturer's references that we've already visited, uh, the training, which we do frequently uh, for our users. Um, we have various different training courses for Arcadios. We have Arcadios Pro, Arcadios Calc, and also the SketchUp plugin. Uh, we have a technical support team that is dedicated to helping you uh, get past any problems which are conception, technical, um, or whatever your problem is, we're there to support you throughout your projects. That does, of course, include the software updates, um, which are frequent, um, firstly for the catalog. Uh, it's uh, essentially weekly. Um, for Arcadios Pro, we're looking at numerous times per year, and Arcadios Calc 
as well. Arcadios Calc, the difference, of course, is that it's a local software. Um, Arcadios Pro is web-based. Uh, we do, of course, have customer satisfaction follow-ups. Um, so myself and the team, we get in contact with you, check how things are going, see that everything is okay. And that's not just to make sure that everything is okay, but also to listen to you and what kind of needs you might have for the future. So if your, um, your work is starting to go in a certain direction and the tools don't exist for that, we obviously like to know about that and develop the tools so that you can succeed. Now, I mentioned earlier a sneak peek at a new feature. This, of course, is the same 3D conception window that we were looking at earlier, except that with our latest release, which is due to be out soon uh, in the, the coming weeks, we have a very new feature. Um, so going back to that Google satellite image that was of higher quality, we now have the possibility to import that MNS layer that's in the SketchUp plugin, but from within the website. Um, so you no longer need to buy a SketchUp license um, or spread your work between two uh, software solutions. Now we can do it all in Arcadios Pro, online, in your navigator, very, very simply. So we have exactly the same content being imported here as in the plugin. We can see that we have all of those um, buildings. We have the near masks. And then when we go back in, we still have the buildings as they are today. Um, so we can still edit the height, the altitude, uh, we can level the terrain, and I can already hear your questions coming. For that car park area on the left, there are trees in there. How do I go about flattening that? So when we add the surface um, on the car park area, very quickly add that. We have that option to level the ground um, for any particular altitude. So even if you're um, going to work that uh, that ground, you're going to add on add some fill, um, you're going to cut it down, maybe um, you can change that as well. And from that point, we can see in the model that it is now flat. That will, of course, be available in all of our standard languages um, throughout Arcadios. Let's go back to that page. There we go. So we have arrived near the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. If I head back to the website, we can see the questions. Uh, I can immediately see a question asking about the recording. Uh, there is, of course, a recording um, that will be sent out at the end to the people that request it in the chat. So if you would like the recording, um, please just leave us a message and we will follow up with that later on. Okay, let's go. So uh, first question, can I design other types of rooftop? Um, of course, this example was a flat rooftop, but there's also the option of drawing a sloped rooftop uh, used in combination with flat surfaces. Uh, users are able to draw most types of buildings. Um, it's a simple conception, but we uh, get around that very simply. Um, and of course, with that up and coming feature with the 3D map, uh, there will be no problem for even the, the most complex of buildings. Uh, is it possible to use microinverters and optimizers? Of course, that's something that we didn't see. Um, but when we set up the, uh, the inverter here, if I go back to uh, uh, inverters, remove all of them. And when I add an inverter um, using optimizers is very simple. We add them here in that uh, additional drop down list. Um, let's imagine there's a solar edge P300. The only thing is we have to pass it onto manual um, to do that. So there's absolutely no problem. And from that point on, we use the number of inverters, um, maybe two, um, which have six strings of 20 modules. Um, nowhere near the number of my project um, but there you go it's, it's really simple to uh, add in optimizers uh, micro inverters as well of course that was the same thing so let's uh, remove the optimizers go back to 
automatic. Um, uh, let's have an AP systems. Uh, I'm not sure we will have uh, valid configurations here, maybe. Um, yeah, so what we can see is with that exclamation mark, the compatible inverters are non-optimal. Um, obviously, we are filtering based on my preferences in the settings, um, trying to respect a, um, a, a, a scale of uh, acceptable configurations between 85 and 105 percent of uh, the inverter over um, peak power. So there we go. We can see that that's non-optimal. But there we go. So for microinverters as well, there's no problem using them. Uh, how do the shading calculations work? So that's um, something that we saw earlier. Um, shading calculations, uh, maybe add that inverter back in, going back to uh, Huawei. So Huawei, we're on to 30 modules. And we'll just go back to that very quickly. It was the first reference. Validate that. Go back to the cabling. pattern the the influence of shading on the ivp uh, feet curves essentially the shading calculations use a view factor um, looking at the the front of the panel and the back of the panel which we calculate really panel by panel um, and looking at all types of shading whether it's nearby objects or horizontal shading uh, it's taken into account for the view factor of the back face for bifacial modules as well of course Uh, the next question we had uh, from Obino Kalu, uh, if I understand correctly, the Arcadios Pro has an add-in similar to Google SketchUp um, so that we can carry out similar features on Arcadios without... Yes, that's exactly it. So it's an upcoming feature. Um, it will be available within the next few weeks. And the idea is to import the full 3D environment. So we already have the buildings, the shading, uh, and the terrain as well in 3D. So for your ground-mounted systems, um, you will be able to um, position your tables on the ground following uh, the terrain. Another question, what types of battery storage can I use? Um, yeah, so earlier on we looked at the self-consumption profile with uh, battery storage here. We used a BYD uh, battery box and the different types of battery storage. Uh, it's a good question because that's uh, more in the tech specs of each reference. If I go to the uh, characteristics sheet for this material. We can see in there that the type here is lithium ion. Um, so that really is designated in the uh, specifications of the product. Uh, but uh, all of our available uh, batteries are in there with different types, uh, lithium ion, lithium polymer, um, other options as well. Uh, we can follow up with that information later on. Uh, should I always use a PVGIS weather station? Um, let's go back to the location tab. So the PVGIS weather stations are uh, very practical because we can simulate uh, a station basically uh, next to our site, so uh, very close proximity. Uh, of course, these are satellite-derived uh, weather stations, so it's not necessarily the most pertinent. Um, deciding what weather station to use is entirely the responsibility of the engineer that's uh, um, conceiving the, the, the project, uh, but that's why we have plenty of different options. And among those different weather stations, um, they each have um, a certain value to them. So uh, you have plenty of choice. No particular station is better than the others um, for all examples, but you just have to pick which works best. uh can you create a building that doesn't exist on google uh of course so in uh as we just as we did today um we can create any building we like um from memory in that video this particular building is not imported so uh, once we're in there we use all of the same tools as we do today so it would just be a case of adding that building that isn't in the google data absolutely no problem just the same as in sketchup by the way so uh whether it's in the web solution or SketchUp, we can still do that. Uh, 
Uh, is the report customizable? Yes, I didn't go into the detail earlier on, uh, but when we generate the PDF report here, uh, the cog just to the right lets us uh, customize all of those sections. So if we want to add the details, we can. We can remove the Google Maps image, uh, the reference weather station. Um, for the illustrations, we can decide if they're portrait or landscape, uh, one column or two columns. Um, we can add custom headers if we like. And all of that, we can download our settings um, at the end to then import them in each project uh, if we want uh, a standardized uh, set of uh, settings. Uh, I think that will be our final question. We've already overrun a bit. So how do you know which projects, uh, products are available in each country? Um, so we, we work with the various manufacturers to update this information. Um, as I said earlier, we um, work in very close proximity with these manufacturers. Uh, we have a, an enormous catalog and we have a team dedicated to doing that. Um, so they're in uh, constant talks with these manufacturers to make sure that the information is up to date and accurate. Um, so those uh, manufacturers will tell us where they commercialize their products. 